and take Cooler Part 2 with the Vortex 360. Good afternoon morning and welcome to Turbo Tortoise Tech. If you're new here, I'm Reese of the Four Piece Warranty, a Wookiee Triple XL, and I have done the Symphony 360. If you want to check that out, I'll do a pop up banner for you over here. But today we're doing the Vortex and we are going to compare it to the Symphony because the Symphony actually created a really good base line for its price at 1899. For under 2000 Rand, you were getting a 360 mole radiator with pretty damn good fans and a pretty a nice looking pump head. If you like a big square block on the pump, then it was absolutely perfect for that. And the lighting, everything was pretty well done. But the Vortex is now a bit more premium and it takes things up quite a notch in performance and look and feel. So let's go through what's in the box. Well, you obviously get a huge ass flipping 360 mole radiator you get some really, really nice fittings and finishings. And I particularly like the way that they've done, for instance, the MD bracket, which is just two pins which attach on either side to the existing brackets, which is a nice way, honestly, of doing this um, because then you don't have to take out the back plate. The Intel side, it's got a back plate top mount, but all of the fittings and stuff that you'll find in the box are 10 out of 10. The fans on this kit are some of the best I've ever seen from Antec, and I particularly like the finish around the edges of the LED. They've gone for that smoked glass effect that we've had in automotive for a while, and it really does help it pop off just a little bit. But you'll notice in the corners as well, they've done full rubberizing throughout the corners, and the mounts and the, the actual chassis, the frame of this, are incredibly good quality. Easily the best I think I've ever seen from Antic. The base plate of the pump as well is exactly the same as before. It's a solid piece of copper and it is nicely lapped and polished. It is very, very smooth. It does come with a little bit of thermal paste and a spatula so that you can spread it out across the top of the chip to make sure that you get full coverage. Never forget that it's non-conductive, non-corrosive. So if you do get a little bit in the socket, it's not the end of the world. Now brackets and installation on this are a little bit on the old school side. The only thing I would like to see change, honestly, is that the actual fitting screws that, or the nuts that fit over the top like that have some spring loading in them just to make sure that they remain in, under tension and they don't rattle out over time if you are moving the machine around. There is a small possibility of that happening, but most importantly, the pressure that the screws are putting in, you gotta be a little bit careful. Don't over tighten them because then you are gonna potentially damage the top of your CPU depending on the CPU. The look and feel of the pump head though, when it's on, is absolutely exceptional and more of that smoked plastic with a really nice LED effect through the inside of it, creating a vortex looking LED on the inside of it. So keeping it on brand there and tech, I see you, I see what you're doing. But this is where we have to move on to performance, the most important part. Yes, it doesn't look nice, but does it perform well? And the answer, TLDR is actually incredibly well. There was a little bit of an anomalous thing where the motherboard was reading the pump head speed at twice of the rated output. So we can assume it's doing 2,850-ish, which is very much in line with specification. I would have liked to see it pip over 3,000 RPM because I think it would have just pushed the performance even further. But if you look at the graphs now versus the simple it's clear which is the winner. There is a definite performance uplift and at a much better temperature. That's one of the first times I've seen some of those P-cores sitting at a 74 degree average. That's incredibly good going. The 13600K, which we're testing it on, is a thirsty, thirsty boy. I've got it at full 200 watts. It is pipping at 5.1 a max on the P-cores. So, and those are generally the ones that generate the heat. Um, but even if we look at a multi-threaded rendering test like Cinebench, we actually do get some performance gain. And all of that at a lower temperature once again. So if you wanted to look at overclocking even a 13600K with this and pushing it to that 99C max, you could, and keeping it there kind of on average, you could get a, quite a bit out of this, I would say, um, just based on it hitting like mid to high 70s. That's a very, very good result from that test indeed. Unless we forget, ADA64 is a synthetic benchmark. It's not like gaming. If you're in a game or something to that effect, you're not gonna see temperatures anywhere near that. So your boost clocks are gonna be right at the top consistently. And the fan noise from this is incredibly, is incredibly good and low. 25 to 50 
on the sound meter, you're going to see a very, very small increase. Going up to 75, we do see that then become quite a lot more audible and then full 100% fan, it's a bit of a hurricane because these are 2,600 RPM fans. And I kid you not, with both of these fan kits, I can actually feel the airflow from across the room. So the ability to push through the radiator is very, very good. I don't see you in general needing to go above 50%, in which case it's gonna be whisper quiet. Adding to that are the rubber mounts. Adding to the look and feel is this incredibly nice smoke glass. And yeah, a little bit of the diffusing for the LEDs is not perfect. And you can kind of see where they are. There are some bright spots in there. But overall, the look and feel and stuff, I'm really, really enjoying it. Price points on this as well are pretty damn competitive. Three-year warranty from Antec. And honestly, I think this is one of their best lines. I really do like doing cooler tests. Uh, I love cooling. If you don't know about me, cooling is everything. <laughs> and uh, yeah, my PCs are generally quite overkill spec like that. And it's nice to know that if there's a product that looks the way that I want it to look in my build, that it then will function properly as well. It's not just an aesthetic thing. The performance from these is exactly what we wanted to see. I would, however, like to see them get a slightly stronger pump. Just go over that 3000 RPM range. It seems to be the area in which the maximum sort of cooling output performance. And it's very sh shallowly underneath that. And with these very, very strong fans, look, it probably only improves the results by two to three degrees. But it's, I think, the obvious area for improvement. Everything else. I gotta say it's rather good. They even include in the package, something I almost forgot to mention, the daisy chain one into three for the fans, which is really, really nice to have for controlling them off a single slot, but they've even got a built-in RGB controller. So if you don't have one on your motherboard, you can hook that sucker up and you'll see there's a little SW on the one side. That's so that you can take a switch from the front of your PC, like your reset switch, and connect it directly, and then you'll be able to control the RGB from there. So they've really thought of everything with this kit, to be quite honest. The mounting brackets and style is fantastic. The look and feel, I think it speaks for itself. I do personally find it very attractive. Being a guy from automotive, it just tickles the fancy over there just right. Anywho, that is all I have for you on the Antec Vortex 360. If you have enjoyed this review, please do hit us up with a like and subscribe, and I will see you on the flip side.